Hello, welcome along to this session. Here I'm going to be looking at managing Mac devices with Intune. We're going to be registering a Mac device in the Intune console. We're going to be looking at how it's all configured for initially. We are then going to configure some applications to automatically push out to those uh, Mac devices too. So I'm going to take you through everything we need to do in the console to get that up and running and show you everything we need to do every step of the way. So let's get started with the Intune console here. We're going to jump over to devices and have a look at the Mac devices. We should find it's empty. We've got nothing in there right now, which we don't. You can see here, no devices found, but we do need to start off with Mac OS enrollment and work out how we can get these devices in them. We do need to create first the MDM push certificate. So let me show you how to get that done. So once we go in there, you'll find it's a few steps we need to take. So firstly, obviously we agree to the, uh, the permissions being allocated here and first step really download the csr so we do that we'll drop into downloads as you can see and then onto straight away onto number three create the mdm push certificate now this will send us across to the apple site where we do need to add, to log in with an apple id now this could be your personal apple id i've created one for the company which is apple at as you can see there cozymouse.com which we just put out password in it's going to ask us for the two factor there we go which i've just put in there as well and we get greeted by this uh this screen which looks like it's out of the 90s to be honest but it does work fine so we just hit here create certificate and what it's going to ask us to do is to put in that uh that signing request which is the csr we just downloaded so we hit choose file there and we should be able to grab that there we go csr open up and upload in there and there we go, created a new push certificate. So now we need to download that in there and that will come straight back down again. It really is that easy. And back to this next step here, I'm gonna put the Apple ID we used in there, which it needs to know, somewhere else, and select the file, which will be that push certificate. Yeah. And hit the upload button. And there we go, push certificate successfully created. And if you go up to the top of the screen, you can see now we have it active. It'll tell you when it expires. You do need to keep an eye on that. So you're gonna to need to do that every year, but uh, obviously you can see all the details there. So we are good to get started with the next step. Now I'm gonna add a compliance policy in here. And that's because I don't want to have Mac devices that are particularly old joining the system. I'm going to restrict the, the base OS version that can join the Intune environment. So I'm going to say create policy here. I'm just hit create. I'm going to call this one, um, I'll call it compliance policy just for one of a better name, but we'll put our company name on there. You can put other, obviously other details in there to suit what you need. But really what we're going to have here under device health, uh, is fine device properties now this is where we actually have to type in that version number i'm going to say 12.0 which is monterey and obviously you've got other options you can you can put in here so have a look through these and see if any of these suit your requirements um, in this particular demonstration i'm just going to put in a minimum os version here so then we hit next what are the applicants so the actions for non-compliance obviously it gets to uh, mark the device non-compliant immediately you can do other things like you can send them an email and other things that uh, to, to suit that um, i'm just going to say no we're just going to mark it as non-compliant here so we hit next and we're going to assign that to all devices that come in you could restrict it to particular groups or particular users if you want to but i'm just going to say here add all devices and hit next and review that and just hit create and there's our compliance policy done so with that set now we're going to jump across to a mac and we're going to uh, join it with using the company portal and we should see it show up in here as a mac device so looking at the mac here we are going to jump into chrome now the web address to do the company portal is um, I find it a little bit strange actually it is actually that and once you jump into that all it's going to do is just drop straight down a package called company portal installer onto your machine so that's the link you need to push out i'll put that in the description for the video too but it will then bring up this company portal installer which obviously you just run 
and just run through the normal continue install put our password in to add the software as you can see it's pretty quick install to get the company port already and there we go and we'll just put that to trash no problem there now if I drop that away you'll see we get the normal Microsoft updater as well we'll just minimize that too but if I go into applications now you'll see we've got company portal here and let's start that one off and we'll hit the sign in and do that and we obviously get the the cozy mouse access which will now hit begin and it tells us what it can do and can't do and the like so we have hit continue there text to mac and you can see it's now got to do the uh, device uh, profile which is really that that push certificate that, I, that we had earlier it has to download the profile onto the mac to be able to manage it so we'll hit the download profile you can see that will then drop into the downloads there and there we go what the user then has to do is actually go into this guy and say yep we'll verify that that's what we want and then they hit install now this is obviously something that the users are going to have to do uh, so they need to be obviously told that that is an okay thing to happen so that's part of your OCM management about how that works but, and they'll need to put their password in as well so it's not quite as friendly as doing a Windows machine I would suggest but you can see it does uh, have a requirement on the Mac side to be able to do that we are installing profile and there we are there we have it okay so once we've done that we can say go back it says here install come back to the company portal so we hit the back option there and of course then it checks that it has done it you can see management profile installed hit continue on there and it will then go and check out all the device settings and this is what it's looking at for those compliance and security policies as you can see quite friendly says it might take a bit of a while so go make a cup of coffee and come back so I'm just going to pause this one it does that and come back in a second so after a while you can see that it's come back and says you're set we can now hit done and here are the machines that he uh, has been logging into you can see here's the Mac mini and now it says in compliance which is good so let's go back to the console and see what it looks like in there Looking good in here then, we have Mark's Mac Mini showed up. You can see it's compliant. There's our OS version and our primary user logon. If we go into the device, you can see that uh, we can see a bit more about it. So serial number and, and otherwise. Um, different things like obviously things like the, uh, the managed apps, which should be nothing there right now. Uh, we don't have any applications um, uh, managed on that machine. Uh, we, we haven't uh, even created any Apple uh, products as yet. So we're going to be doing that next. Uh, but you can see here from hardware, you can see a bit, obviously a bit more about it. You can see what uh, what sort of storage space he has and, and the different versions of the, the Macs and also the, um, yeah, as we saw before, the OS version. Anyway, let, let's come back to this main screen here and as you go back to the devices, let's get on and put some applications on that machine now. Now the application I want to install automatically on all the Macs, uh, we will do it through a group assignment. So we we'll put actual people into the group to receive the app. We could do it to all devices, but I'm just going to segregate it and say particular users for this rollout. But what we'll do is I want to put Adobe Reader. We want to install the official Adobe package on all of these machines automatically when they uh, come into the uh, the MDM, the, the Intune management. So what we'll do is, well, first of all, I want to go across to Intro. I'm going to create a group for that particular rollout and you can see what I've done on on the previous Intune. So you can see here I've got Intune app install and I've got these here. I'm going to create a brand new group and let's call this one a security group and I'm going to call it uh, Intune app install just to keep the naming convention correct. I'm going to put Mac in there so we know it is obviously for Mac, Adobe Reader and we'll put it in here installs Adobe Reader package and I will actually put the member in straight away I think I'll actually put him in immediately save a bit a bit of time later so we'll put back in there and create that now obviously it's not going to do anything right now we don't have that assigned to any applications as such but the, the main thing is we now have the the group that we can 
uh, assign things to. So there's our, our Mac app install group right there. So back into here, have a look at the apps. And if I look at Mac apps, there aren't any in there. Now, what I'm going to do with this, I'm actually going to jump over back to the Mac because I need to download that package file from Adobe and actually unpack the uh, DWG file, which is like the Mac version of an ISO. I want to grab the package file out of it and I want to show you how to do that. The reason is, is because the package file already has all the, the CF bundle identifiers and for the versioning information of the app. Makes it easier to install that into the Intune console if you already have that. If you have a DWG file, what you need to do is actually go into the plist when you break that package down and grab those identifiers out of that, uh, which is a little bit more complicated to do. It's not hard, really, but it's just a uh, just an extra step that you need to take. So um, I'm going to like to show you that as well, actually, while I go through things. Now, obviously, you wouldn't be doing this on a on a user's machine. This will be my my admin machine if if I was using that. So, obviously, take that into context there. What I'm showing you on this demo is is really how you do it on a Mac. Um, so, let's go into the console here. I'm going to go into the the Injune console inside uh, my tenant. Log on as the admin user. So, we we'll go to uh, Injune.Microsoft.com like so, and we'll log in. As you can see here. I should be logged in as Buck, so I actually want to log in as the admin user, not as Buck. So we'll sign in with a different account there, which will be the uh, admin at there. There we go. Okay, and now look at the applications in here. Now we look at Mac, obviously we're not going to have anything, so we're going to add that in. But first of all, I need to go to the Adobe site and I need to download that package. So we download that file. It is in, as you can see here, it is the get.adobe.com slash reader. Drop us into this, hit with download, and it will take that uh, DMG file and drop it into downloads for us. And there we go. Cool, I'll close that. Let's go into our finder, have a look at downloads. You can see there is the DMG. Now, if I mount that DMG, what you'll see here is that then you can find the package file. It's the package file that we actually want to be using, not the, the DMG itself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that package file and actually uh, extract that out and put that, as you can see here, I'm just going to copy that onto the desktop. So if I go into here, go to desktop, I can then Paste that in. I'm going to just, as I say, grab that package file. And now what I'll do is I'll go to this Mac OS apps and we hit add. Now the app type is going to be PKG. And hit select there. And we get to ask, sorry, answer a few questions about it. So obviously the app package, which will be if I do a search here and look at desktop. There it is. Open that up, give that a second or two, that will then read that in and it will then, oh, very quickly there, but what it'll do is it'll talk about the different versioning that it needs in these uh, these other sections. So when I put in a publisher, I'll just put Adobe in there, I'll leave all these other blank for now, we don't need to fill those in, but I will change the name of it to Adobe Reader and hit next. We don't need to put any any install scripts. If you wanted to, you could. That's where you put them in there. But we hit next on that. Requirements, operating system. I'm going to call it the the Monterey is is our thing, and that's just for our own compliance internally because we've set that as a as a base level for the OSs that we want to bring in. Next, and detection rules. Now this is what I'm talking about with that CF bundle identifier. It's found these from the package that this is. So if it, if it finds the application already installed on the machine, it'll start checking these numbers to make sure that it has the most up-to-date version and obviously update it accordingly. But if it has these already, it doesn't need to do anything. And that's what it will grab from that package file, which is, uh, uh, which is good. And you can see here, you can say ignore app version, yes or no, if you want to. I mean, in this case, I might just say ignore app version and actually get these on the machines here, but you could say um, no, and then of course um, run that detection process for you. So we say next, assignment. Now this is where we can say for all devices or we can add a group. So I'm gonna put in the group, which will be that uh, one we created 
little bit earlier. That one there. Select that. And next. And just review and create. And that really, to be fair, is it really. That's that's all you need to do. The, the application is there. If I hit refresh on that. Now, you'll notice straight away that it doesn't have the application listed. I can hammer this for a, a few minutes and uh, it will eventually pop up. Now, that is dependent on the uh, the upload of the app and obviously getting into the back end. So this is now showing up in the back end that it's there, but it's not assigned yet. You see this one says no. Now, that is because it's still uploading that file into Intune. If I click on this one and have a look, you can see there's our status of it. So it's not going to be available, obviously, until it manages to grab that package file. It doesn't upload the package file immediately as you as you go through that wizard. It doesn't take it then. It's only when you um, accept it and create the app, it goes back and uploads that in. So if it is a very large file, um, it will take, a, obviously, a few minutes to, to upload. So once it has done that, you'll find the assignment will then say yes, and then it's ready to deploy on those machines. So just jumping back in and catching that before it hits 100% just so you can see what it does. And there we go. And it should change to application created. And it'll have the update here for the upload. And there we go. And you can see that's now changed to yes automatically. And now it's ready to deploy. So really we just now have to Sit back and wait, and you'll find on this Mac we'll we'll get the Adobe Reader put in. So let's go back to the. I'll, I'll close all this and log out of this one now. If I come out of here, now you'll also notice as well that that you don't have to have the uh, company portal up to for these things to work, and that's sometimes a misconception that you need to have this actually running for these applications to install. That's not strictly true. If you look in the Activity Monitor, what you'll find under the uh, the various processes that that will show up here if i look at these here uh, you'll find there is a process called intune mdm which is down here here we are intune mdm agent and that will sit there even though i would go to company portal and quit it's still there. So obviously it's in the background and looking after things from an Intune perspective, um, even like I say, even without the company portal being loaded. So uh, that's all good. So we finished up with the Mac now for, for this stage. Let's go back to the, uh, the Windows PC in here. And if I hit refresh, we should see the, the application appear. I'm going to go back to the devices now, because if I go in here and have a look at the Mac devices, and go into the Mac Mini, I should see a uh, an assignment uh, for the managed apps for Adobe Reader. And there it is there. And you can see there, required install, waiting for install status. So once that has been installed, it will then obviously change that status for us. And then we can go back to the Mac and we can check that it is installed there correctly. So I want to jump back into the Mac now and just show you what we do with that uh, DMG file to grab those identifiers out of it. So what we do is I've just downloaded one, which is from the, well, I'll show you what it is. It's the, it's the Royal TS site, and you can see it's a application for remote controlling machines. So that's uh, downloaded in there, and I'll show you where that is. It's under here, as you can see, there's my DMG. So what we do to get those identifiers out of it is we would open that up and have a look at this package that's in here. So what we do is we show package contents and you can see here there's an info p list. If I go into that info p list, now I'm using obviously Xcode, it's installed on this machine to, to do that, but otherwise it's a text file. But you can see here, here are all the details. So the bundle identifier we've got here and the different versioning. So it means that, if I just move that across the side for access there. Let's go in here and say add. And if I were to add a type here, DMG file, no problem there. And then I'll select the package, which will be from here. What did I call it there? Royal TS. There we go. And just bring that one in. Now, if I put in here Royal TSX, like so. When we go through this, you'll notice that requirements, I'll put the Monterey as well there. 
but detection of all you see it's got nothing in there so this is where we have the cf bundle identifier the bundle id which we can grab from over here which happens to be this one so we then grab that paste that in there and the version which i think was at 602 so yeah there's our version there we're going to use the short version so that would just be this here 6.0.2 and of course that then would be uh, relevant and we can hit next there so really that's a quick um a quick way of finding what those um, cf bundle identifiers are for that detection rule from um, that dmg file now i'm just going to hit next i'm not going to assign it any groups we'll just keep this one probably for later on but if i just do the create there you'll find it will then create my application for me which i can then as we say assign it to a group later if you want to but you can see there it's uploading that file and that will um, pop into this window if i refresh it'll come up there and you can see there it is there okay so let's now have a look and see if that application has installed the the adobe reader so we go into our launch pad here on the mac and would you look at that there's adobe reader installed nicely there we go good and there's our little welcome one there we go excellent so that has worked nicely which is good to see now i'm going to go back to the pc here because what we can then do is a refresh on this screen and it should show us the there we are installed on that application and if i go into the apps themselves here and have a look at the mac apps we should see yes that's assigned have a look at the adobe reader and you can see yes that's installed on one machine if i look at the device install status it should show us that mac mini so obviously everything's tying together nicely and we have adobe reader installed on the mac automatically using that intune uh, registration that mdm client that we that we've managed to get in there so we've got a managed mac which is perfect and we're able to drop applications in there for the users as well so thank you for watching. I hope that helps out with getting Macs installed into and managed by the Intune console for M365. I really appreciate it when you do subscribe to the channel, so please do so. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks again for watching.